Hi, Data Guy here. And today I got a really cool video on how you can use the external Python operator in Airflow to run Snowpark queries. So covering two of the latest features out in the market, you got Snowflake Snowpark and you got external Python operators. You can use versions of Python that aren't typically supported by Airflow. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. And you might notice that unlike most of my videos, I am not starting within an Airflow UI or VS Code. I'm actually starting within Snowflake. So the first thing we're gonna do within Snowflake is create a test DB for us to use for this. Um, so essentially what we're doing here is just creating a database um, and then giving it some data in a test table to actually work with that will then manipulate using Snowpark and Airflow. Um, so this is just really set up for the interesting part. So first thing we'll do is go into a worksheet um, and you're going to copy the code from the link that I'll put in the description to actually create this table. So it's just gonna use generic Snowflake uh, sample data. So you can see creating a table of dog intelligence um, and we created it successfully. You can see the details over here. Um, now, if we reopen public, we can see that dog intelligence table there. Now, the next step we'll need to do is actually populating this table with some data. So we'll just, again, copy some code from the link below. And boom, now we've inserted some rows and we've got some basic information within this table. So now that we've gotten this all set up, let's set up our Airflow environment. So what you wanna to do to get set up on the Airflow side of things is first create a folder called Astro Snowpark Tutorial. Honestly, you can call it whatever you want, but that's what it says in the doc, so that's what I'm doing. Once you've created that folder, uh, go to terminal, and you can either do this through terminal or through, you know, just good old graphic interface. Um, and type in the good old Astro Dev Init. This will pull in all the directories you need for a fresh Airflow environment, which is exactly what we're trying to do today. Now, traditionally, we would just start this environment right up, but we're actually gonna do a decent amount of setup with the requirements and packages to make this Snowpark setup work. Uh, this is because Airflow typically supports one version of Python and Snowpark uses the other. So for this, we'll be using the external Python operator. Um, and so this is really a showcase of both of those tools. So enough preface, let's go to our requirements text. So instead of modifying the typical requirements text here, we're actually gonna create a new file and call it Snowpark Requirements. This is because we're gonna to need to create a separate requirements text file for the Python virtual environment we're gonna to use to run that external Python operator. So within here, we'll bring in the pandas library, Airflow, PySAP code v2 binary, and the Snowflake provider for Airflow. So when we run our virtual environment, all these packages will be installed within that virtual environment. Now, to go to our packages.txt file, we're gonna add a couple more things. So let's save the Snowpark requirements and add build essential to our packages text file. This will allow us <clears throat> to use the astronomer build kit, which will simplify the process of actually creating a Python virtual environment. So after we've added this to our packages file, we'll then also need to go update our Docker file to actually install Python in virtual environment and its requirements using that astronomer Docker build kit. So we'll go to our Docker file and make sure it looks something like this. This will bring in our Python virtual environment and install it within our Airflow environment. We're also passing it the parameter 3.8, so it uses the 3.8 version of Python, and we're calling it Snowpark, and then also get passing it those Snowpark requirements text to install all the necessary system level packages because it is creating an environment inside of our overall Airflow environment that won't by default inherit any requirements from that requirements that text file. Now that we've done that, we gotta ensure that Docker build kit is enabled. In order to do this, what you're gonna wanna do is go into your Docker desktop, go into your Docker engine, and then make sure that this features build kit is equal to true. So this will allow us to actually use that build kit um, when we're building our Docker image. Um, so now we've got all the steps in place so we can start building our environment. So to kick off the process, we're just gonna wanna type in astro dev start, which will build our Docker image and launch a local Airflow environment. So this is gonna take 
a little bit longer than a typical image build because we're building virtual environments and installing uh, our 2.8 Python installation uh, as well as Python virtual environment. So if you wanna make any subsequent changes after this, I recommend using DAG only deploy so it doesn't have to rebuild all of that every time you wanna push a change. So now that it looks like our Airflow is up and running, let's go check up on it in the cloud and make sure. So to do that, just going to switch to Cloud Airflow. And so we just use the default credentials already filled in. And we can just see the classic example basic and example advanced DAG. So what we're gonna wanna be doing here now is set our connections to Snowflake. So using whatever connections you've defined, so your variables are gonna be a little different, but make sure that you fill out every field that I am filling out here. Um, so if we go to create a Snowflake connection, we will call this Snowflake default. So that way the DAG code can just use this connection without us needing to change that Snowflake default to whatever we call this connection ID. And obviously it's going to be a Snowflake connection. So now within our Snowflake connection here, we're going to need to put our schema, which is public, as well as your username and password. Then you'll want to fill out your account name, which will be three letters, then a couple numbers. Then you'll have database name and which region you're running Snowflake in. Snowflake. And for saving it, just test it really quickly. And you can see we got a successful, successful test and we can hit save. Next, we're gonna go back to VS Code to actually create our DAG to interact with Snowpark. So going back into VS Code, we're gonna to wanna to create a new Python file. Now within this Python file, which we'll call external Python pipeline.py, you're gonna to wanna to copy and paste the code from the document, again, from that handy link below. So here we're defining DAG, calling it Python virtual environment, importing some packages, just basic DAG and task, because all the packages we really need are in that virtual environment packages or sorry, Snowpark requirements folder that are the external Python operator will actually be using. So if we quickly walk through what this DAG is doing, first you have a task ID that is printing the context of the DAG. So this is going to print whatever we return from Snowflake in the log file within Airflow. So we don't have to go into Snowflake to look at what the changes that actually occurred were. And then you have the real meat of this DAG, which is the external Python operator. So you can see we're determining which Python environment we wanna use, calling, giving a task ID. And then within this Python environment, you notice we are also importing Snowflake hook, importing Snowpark, and then using that hook to interact with Snowflake, pass our connection parameters, build a session, and then run a query using Snowpark. So you can see this is going to take the results of that query, then print it for us again within those logs, um, and then close that session. So really simple DAG, but a really powerful one once you start extending this and building a patch, just, you know, an initial operation. So now that we got our DAG, let's go back over to our Airflow environment and run it and see what happens. So now we can see our Pi virtual environment DAG up and running. So let's unpause it and see what happens when we press play. Boom. We got one successful DAG run with two successful task runs. So let's go in and look at the logs and make sure everything worked just okay. So to do that, what we'll do is go into our external Python operator, hit the logs and scroll down. And here we can see all of our query executions that we just performed within Snowflake using Snowpark. So in about 10 minutes, you can have a full DAG up and running to interact with Snowpark through Airflow using the Astro CLI. Um, so Really powerful for if you want to interact with, schedule, and run Snowpark jobs using an external service while still having the visibility into what's actually happening within those underlying Snowpark queries. It's also a really great way to learn how to use the external Python operator and how that functions um, you know, in a real world use case, which is being able to use a different version of Python that Snowpark supports. Um, so really hope you learned something today. Um, I know I did and have a good one.